Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Matuska here with uh, Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, Thursday afternoon live. Um, I'm along here with Amber Ingalls and our cameraman, oops, camera lady, um, <laughs> Caitlin Noah. And we kind of like that name because it's lots of animals with that. Um, anyway, she's been doing a fine job and she's somewhat new here and she's coming along pretty darn fast. So during Mandy's maternity leave, Caitlin's been taking over the uh, filming and and been doing real good. Mm -hmm. um, today uh, we're getting away from pan pastel slightly. Oh my gosh! Yes. You know, <laughs> if I never see another pan pastel, it'll be too soon. <laughs> They're all the uh, rage. It's a good product, uh, but it's time to move on to some more exciting things. And um, today we're going to talk about alterations. Um, we did show them. Um, a few weeks ago, how I think you took a, made a nice rock base for a bobcat and a little branch and things like that. And base work is really, really important. Uh, kind of the base work can really sell your uh, product, you know, add a lot of cred credibility to your product. It will really enhance your presentation. And if it's done really, really poorly, maybe it won't enhance it so much, you know. Um, <laughs> I've done both. And, uh, so anyway, we're going to show you a few things, and when it comes to alterations, um, a lot of people are afraid of alterations, and an alteration can be as simple as lifting a leg up or putting a leg down, uh, moving a leg, adding a leg, a little curve, over the um, <laughs> but uh, cutting a, a head off, changing heads, yep. and our alterations are kind of determined by the customer's wishes. And uh, you and I were talking before the show, and I said, you know, we rarely, rarely, rarely go to the catalog, pick out something exactly that the customer wants for a pose, and it magically fits his skin. That's, that's kind of an oxymoron, and it most often doesn't happen. And you can stretch a little bit, you can compress a little bit, but most of the times there's alterations involved. Um, so, uh, with your Bobcat, we uh, amber skin the bobcat, and anytime we skin an animal, um, we take really extensive measurements. Um, and we have more extensive ones than this, but this is like a, one of our um, deer, goat, or sheep type measurements. And it, it has a lot more than what the catalogs ask for. The catalogs ask for a nose to eye, um, a length and a circumference, basically. Um, but we have a lot more on here. What these are for is when you skin the bobcat, you even take, um, I mean, from the elbow to the, to the knee joint, to the hoof, um, yeah. all different lengths and circumferences. And then once we get the form in, a lot of times when you order the form, you don't remember, um, this one's close, but it's a little on the big side. By the time the form comes, you forgot what you decided. And when you, then you try to put the height on it, it either swims in there or it doesn't, it's too tight. So that's when we like to get out our measurement sheet that we filled out. We'll have the name, customer's name, um, what it is, um, date, things like that. And we save these, we save them for future reference because um, we use old measurement sheets oftentimes. Yep. And uh, then Amber will take the measurements and compare what we bought to what the animal was that she skinned. And at that point, we know we got to go bigger or smaller. And, uh, and I think you've even got a face one in there too that, that kind of goes through some of the details on the face too. Yeah, and that's kind of nice. face one. Um, Just you know, because a lot of mannequins might lack some detail in the face and it might give you a better understanding of the widths between the eyes. A real, a real handy one on the face is that between the tear ducts, between the eyes, mm -hmm. like, like right over here, um, not just the nose to the eye, what if it's wider? There's, we found down in Oklahoma, we me measured deer, the heads were wider, a seven inch head was wider than our seven inch heads up here. Um, right. And different animals are region specific as far as sizes, they typically run wider in the face, longer in the nose, shorter in the nose, things like that. And if you have measurement sheets of deer in your area, you can compare those to what you get in. Because sure. if you have to start stretching to get the eye holes around with the glass eyes, you're doing some wrong things up on the top and the scalp and your, your hair paddings are gonna become misaligned. 
and uh, your deer won't look as good as other people's deer and you won't quite know why and it's because you're stretching things the wrong way probably sure. and really the doing the measuring doesn't take a lot of time it's I mean fast. it's a few a few extra minutes and then you have it and you know that you've got all the information you could possibly need we have lots and lots of measurement sheets and we save them, save them, save them. Yep. Um, and the more accurate you make them, you know, take them down to the bit, closest eighth of an inch, depends on what it is. Um, mm -hmm. If it's a American bison, I don't do the eighth thing, but you know, sure. if it's a weasel, I maybe do. Oh, yeah. uh, but anyway, um, the, more, the more intricate the animal is, you might want to scale down. You can do it in millimeters and centimeters, that sort of thing too. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what we kind of got a little bit started today when at least from the way I kind of like to do it, I like to have my base somewhat formulated in my head. I don't, um, I don't have to have every rock and every branch and every twig or anything like that on it, but um, I do like to have some kind of shapes. So before the show today, I ran down, I cut a piece of wood. Um, this one's gonna go in a, a glass case. I cut a piece of wood, um, I walked around the building and I couldn't find this bobcat's gonna be climbing up, he's gonna be pretty erect. I couldn't find exactly what I wanted and I found a great big one. So I took it on the bandsaw and I just kinda of trimmed it way down. It was much too short. <laughs> so showing this other side, um, I didn't foam this. This is, this. this is how I built it up. And I just put a couple two by fours, hot glued them down onto my sheet of plywood and this needed to be about um, three inches higher. So I just ran a screw up from the bottom and into this, which was not very strong, but when you add the foam, it gets real, real strong. So this is gonna be exactly how it is. This we can trim to fit the feet. Um, we can add rocks, we can add more branches, and we can do all the scenery work later. That's, that's the kind of fun thing to do. Um, in the old days, um, I had a couple instances, most of you, um, won't know anything about paper forms, or aren't familiar with paper forms. That's all I had when I started was paper forms. They were red rosin paper and um, they were made in a plaster mold and when you got them, the eyes were nothing more than little valleys done with somebody's thumb. Um, you couldn't rasp a paper form. There was, they were hollow on the inside, so if you rasp too much, you got a big void in your, you know, it's like a pinata in there. Sure. And, uh, so then uh, uh, you, you could add, but in those days, I don't even know if we knew what Mondo was, you know, and then you couldn't add plaster because they got heavy. You couldn't add clay, they got too heavy. So you're kind of stuck with what you had. And uh, I had a raccoon, one of the first life-size animals I ever did. Uh, God just made them, as a matter of fact, they were just kind of new <laughs> raccoons were. And uh, so I got this raccoon, and I mean, I had a gap in the belly of, two inches and there's no way to shrink that form down so we sewed it up but I figure I'll, I'll fix it later. <laughs> well it happened to be a blonde raccoon and there's not a lot of blonde, blonde raccoon patching material sure. so that's where the habitat comes in. I mean this was the grassiest base you ever saw. The raccoons climbing up, wonderful <laughs> job. Customers loved it. Sure. Um, still had a two inch gap, painted a little beige color in there, lots of grass, worked great. Mm -hmm. um, so there's habitat will help you out a lot of, a lot of times. Tell you what, uh, hearing those kind of stories really make you appreciate what we have to work with today, you know? Kind of fascinating how everything has grown over the years in products and materials. Okay, the first thing um, we're going to do to start is we showed you how, or what we got here, and I'm going to show you how I kind of kind of made it. We use a lot of foam for our bases. If it's a large base like a uh, a mountain base or something for a mountain goat or you know sheep or any of those big bases we tend to make them hollow out of hardware cloth and fiberglass and then we add our rock work for that that's a whole nother um, a whole nother <laughs> kettle of fish yes yeah. um, it's a lot of work and uh, quick rock is is a product and there's several people out there uh, Dale Manning has a great product called Quick Rock, mm -hmm. and uh, there are other companies too, but uh, that has made rock work easier. Um, but for our smaller animals, a lot of times we will um, go with the foam foam round. It's easy, 
Um, it's inexpensive in compared to the labor. Yep. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time to make it. And so um, I'll show you. I just did oh, I'm sorry. part of this I'm here. Oh, you're around. good. We'll leave it like that. And anytime you pour, uh, I have I show you uh, right and wrong here. Here's what happens when you pour foam on wood. See how you have all these air gaps right here? And then you have to fix those later because the dirt doesn't adhere or whatever kind of ground cover you're gonna put on. And if you look at this side, we don't have that instance. And for years and years and years, I always had all those air bubbles I had to fix until I started putting them up on blocks when I pour it and the weight of the foam dripping off the edge will give you a nice tight, nice tight um, union between your foam and your plywood. So anytime um, you wanna make a little duck base or something like that, we used to just take little chunks of wood, pour it on there, and it would foam up, and now we gotta fix all those little air bubbles. Right? So that's a good, this is a good way and for you, you would, to do that. You would do that, like right now you have the wood exposed because you're gonna be putting it in uh, inside of a wood trim base where you could even do that process if you were just gonna have the foam go over the edge of the wood and go all the way to the table mm -hmm. or floor or whatever. Right. Um, this isn't for um, this space, this is for a, a different box space. Um, this is just molding, I think you call it, from Menards. Um, it's oak, it's got really nice fluting in here, nice detail, it's kind of intricate. Um, this one's a square, a lot of times we make octagons. Um, just cut them up on the miter saw, pin them together, um, put a little ledge in there so that my base doesn't slip down through and my base will lay right on there and it gives you a really nice finished edge. You can finish them in any color stain you want, but these are real easy. Um, I think I probably have $19, $19 piece of wood in this in a while. Nice. Yeah, it's a nice way to finish off a base instead of having the dirt come all the way down. And a lot of times we do, like you're talking about, have the dirt come down to the table. If you do that, you gotta seal it really, really good. And then we try not to make this too steep right here. We wanna make it more gradual so the dirt adheres a little bit better. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I would do on this is figure out where the feet of the animal are gonna go. Mm -hmm. So we kinda did that. We took the, the bobcat, and you, you can hold him up here if you want and show him. Um, he's in a bad state of, disrepair right now. Yeah. He's <laughs> going to have major surgery here. So he's just kind of tentatively pinned together just to kind of hold his hand or hold all of his legs and whatnot on. Um, as a lot of you know, this is how you get them from the supply companies a lot on certain mannequins and other mannequins not so much. It kind of depends on which one, but this one this particular mannequin comes in a lot of different parts, which is okay, it actually, yeah. And I think that nice. um, we do a lot of this with our mannequins too, this is a Brian Hendricks Bobcat, and uh, we do a lot of uh, separate mm -hmm. arms because uh, it helps you, some, some people mount them that way. Um, you have one that you're working on over there that the whole body fits right in. Right. Um, and uh, also shipping, you don't have to worry about shipping, I mean, I have to worry about breakage, and they're easy to put together. But we put this up here, figuring how we're gonna pose him. We want him somewhat alert. I think we had a picture somewhere. Mm -hmm. Lost a picture. But uh, he's standing pretty, he's gonna be more alert than this. And um, this foot's gonna stretch down over here. Now, and this one has nothing here yet. We'll probably bring that foot down, down to the base. And something I learned a lot, long time ago is Amber is a really good fake branch maker. So if I need a foot to go somewhere, um, I it can hang in mid-air because I know Amber can make a branch that will go right under that foot. So that I'm not worried about any of that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, we have an idea. I, I posed this kind of in this manner. Uh, I shaved down the base so one foot, so we really have three feet that are almost touching here. We're gonna change him up a little bit still. But this is how I like to start. We, we kind of, we don't have to finish it. We don't have to put dirt on it and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, um, let's talk about foam. Most of the foam that we use is our mannequin foam. 
Um, there are different foams. The lighter the density of the foam, um, one pound density foam is a one cubic block weighs one pound. Three pound density foam, three cubic block weighs three pounds. And uh, um, any of our mannequins are three pound density foam. And it's, it's good strong foam, probably stronger than it needs to be. We get it in barrels. Uh, you can buy it in probably quarts and gallons and five gallons from us. Um, and this is the same density that most mannequins are poured out of, but the mannequins will be a little bit firmer than when you free pour it because it's not under pressure. They're compressed, yeah. Right. And uh, when we mix our foam, I usually will take little paper cups like this. We don't want to mix, don't mix too much. I'd rather do it in small amounts so I don't not know where to put it all. <laughs> um, and then you got it everywhere. Um, I'm going to pour those into a bigger cup. Hand me that drill there. You notice we've got the wax paper down. That way it doesn't glue itself to the table and it keeps everything clean. It's something we can just pick up and throw we away. We use a lot of wax paper here. A lot of our, it's butcher paper. Um, I think downstairs at the supply company, they call it freezer paper. Mm -hmm. um, this used to be um, a straight number eight gauge wire with nothing more than a circle bent at the end and a piece of duct tape on it to fill in the hole. And it's our foam paddle. And we use these for months and months and months until you can't recognize them anymore. We throw them away and make another one out of a piece of wire. Um, but it's real easy to put in a drill and you can whip your foam. Um, a good mix on your foam. You wanna whip, whip your foam fast, um, 15 to 20 seconds, not, not any longer than that, but you wanna get all the marbling out of it so you don't have any marbling and things. And so, that's really nice when you're doing larger amounts because it's hard to get it all mixed. When you're doing real tiny amounts, it's not quite as important, I would think, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? That you mm -hmm. mix it by hand. We'll do it by hand a lot on a little mm -hmm. little core. But the larger ones, oh my goodness, it's a lifesaver being able to do it with the drill. Now I'd say you got, you might have about 30 seconds before you better start figuring out where your foam's gonna go. Um, other than that, um, it really won't harden up, I would say, for s seven to 10. And it's not a bad idea to put on some gloves, too. <laughs> gloves, apron, um, safety glasses is all very important. Yes. Anything to keep it off of your skin, because it kind of gets on and it makes... Hang on. Wreck your clothes, it'll... <laughs> Hang on to the can container really good, because if you spin too fast, um, this will hit the wall. Now I'm just spinning off the paddle inside, getting rid of all the extra foam. Now, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a really nice, creamy mix. Okay, if you want to angle that up, tip it up towards you once. There you go. I'm going to get it way up a little bit more. I'm going to get it way up under the log. Oh, go foam. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> and if you haven't done so already, make sure to share this video and comment in the comments um, that you shared it just so we can, no, you can lay it down. make sure to um, include you for a chance to win at our, at our giveaway next week. And you have until Thursday next week to do that. Um, now we're just going to let it run right off the edge. Let gravity do its thing. It's like kidding. Jonas Aceland is joining us from Sweden. Oh. Hmm. Welcome. And welcome to everybody else that has said hi in the comments. I'm Sorry I haven't gotten to everybody. And also, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments and we will make sure um, to get those answered. And you can shape it like Amber's doing with her hand um, to a point. I mean, pretty soon it's going to get too too hard to move anymore. Yep. And it'll it gets be, sticky. Yep, there'll be a point where all of a sudden it it will turn stringy, and as soon as as soon as you see it, little strands, little strings coming off of it, it means leave it alone. You know, it's you're done. It means all done. No more playing with it. Okay, now we're going to let that set up, and then we'll show you how to trim it. Um, 
and uh, I can put a little under this log maybe. And you have a little bit of time here to play with this. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to check out our YouTube channel, Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. Um, we upload all of our live videos on there. Um, it's very user friendly. You don't have to have a Facebook to do it. Um, everything is in our playlist. So make sure to check that out and subscribe. And like and share, like and share. Yes, and like and share. Do that, do that right. <laughs> um, now, the nice thing about foam is if it's too much foam, shave it down. If it's too little foam, um, add a little more. Or we can add rocks, we can do all kinds of stuff. Yep. So, um, while we're waiting for this, why don't you show them some of those tools over there that we would shape this with. Sure. Um, first, if we have lar lar large, large amounts that we're gonna be taking off big amounts to really get a basic shape, I like to use the Sawzall. That's this super our favorite tool. Ever. Oh my goodness! And the, and the smaller size one is so nice. It will save your arms because you get. We to use it on life size animals. Oh yeah. We use it on everything. Yep, it's very nice, and once you get comfortable with it, you can hold the animal at the same time, and it's just it's very very nice. But once we get it kind of whittled down and we get a basic shape done, then we'll kind of switch over, and we like using just these rasps. They work really, really nice for carving and shaving. And they can take every the surface and smooth out any of the saw marks or things like that. And they work just wonderful. But you wanna make sure that your foam is good and hard before you go doing this, because you can wreck a rasp pretty quickly. But it- Is this a stale sticky? Yeah, yep. It'll take a few minutes and it'll go through a stage where you can still cut it with the Sawzall, but you better wait to try and hit it with the rasp. But these are really, really nice and that'll get the job done. Sometimes though, we'll also use these and these are what we use the form roughers. Form roughers, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll use those for moving skin and roughing the forms and different things, but we also use it for carving on foam. And it's really nice to be able to get some of that detail in there because it's got that sharp edge. You can just kind of get in there and add whatever kind of little grooves and whatnot that you want. And you can kind of see, I'm barely pushing on this and it really gets gets in there and kind of gets the job done pretty quickly. It, it will. And I've seen you like, um, put in lots of detail mm -hmm. of the foam before you even mache over if you're gonna make rocks. Sure. And uh, your limestone, you're kind of the limestone queen. She's <laughs> as cold as granite. <laughs> but she, uh, I've seen her carve in like some detail to where, oh my gosh, sure. you don't need the mache, you don't need that sort of thing. Yep. But you do still cover it. Right. Um, but you can put in a lot of detail with that. Mm -hmm. And the, the more accurate you get your foam, the less mache you have to put on to be and building the up. You make it. And the lighter it is. Yep. And that's another thing with this, um, I got paper stuck on here, but but with this, we're probably, you know, we don't have a 10 the log pound base, is, yeah. 10 pound base probably. <laughs> sure. The log weighs more than the rest of it. Sure. The log's a heavy one. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's see. Yeah, so in that, how, how many minutes was that? It's it's pretty it's, hard. It's not really ready to cut, but since we are in a power program, <laughs> right. we're going to rush it a little bit. Ready enough for it's, the impatient. Again, it's like a, <laughs> yeah, it's like a cooking program. Right. We've got to pretend it tastes good. John Bellucci says that you can mix dry tempera colors, brown and black, into the foam as you mix it to pre-color the foam. Yes, sure. you can. And that works really nice because then when you go to cover it with dirt, and it'll make it easier to cover with dirt. Okay. Just a matter of um, you can use a knife. I've seen more mm -hmm. knife cuts cutting carving foam than anything else, so be right. careful of the knife. Um, or you know, this is, we like these things. I've seen people use electric knives. It's kind of almost like that. Mm -hmm. And the wood blades will be a little bit more aggressive. 
aggressive. Um, and this is a metal. And that's blade. a metal blade. Metal blade. I like the metal blades. They don't yeah. don't cut people and. They don't jiggle. They have a tendency yeah. to jiggle less when you're cutting the foam. We have some tree trimming blades that if you touched yourself, it's gonna yeah. cut you without mm -hmm. running. <laughs> um, okay, should we get on to the, the real project? The, sure. And we apologize if the focus is a little out. Um, when we go up close, sometimes it takes a little bit to refocus. So we're trying to work on that and figure that out so it's as clear as it can be for you guys. And we were, we were talking, you know, like the reasons to alter are one, make it bigger or smaller to conform to your measurement sheets. Mm -hmm. um, never, it's a golden rule of mine, we don't cut out hair to make them fit, I just won't allow it. Um, customers expect the size animal that they got. Sure. Um, so we, we make the, we do a lot of um, custom alterations as well as the pose. So you got a size issue for alterations reason and you have a pose and we never take a stock form and mount on it. I, I can't remember the last time we did it. No. So the first thing before, before even thinking about altering, whether it's the right pose or not, or whatever, the first thing we do is we usually get out the hide and we'll do a test fit on it. Or that's what I like to do, just so that if you alter, you're gonna have rough foam like this on your, on your form. And then when you go to put a hide on that, it's gonna grab onto that skin and not allow it to slide around like it does on this nice smooth foam and it can be a little hard to test it then. Mm -hmm. So before we touch it or at all, we would like to put it together, whether you put it together with pins or screws and just kind of do a, a good fit on the hide and just, just so you have an idea of, okay, the leg's a little bit big here, you know, if this works, the belly might be a little bit small and get a good idea for how the animal fits the mannequin. And then, so we, we already has, have gone ahead and done that. Um, tell them I see you have notes all over here. You, you I do. used to like a tablet. Um, <laughs> why don't you tell them what, your, what all your scribblings are? That's kind of interesting. Yeah, well, it, it helps me because then I can, I, like I said, we've already test fitted this. So as I'm putting the hide on and I'm, I'm fitting around each one of the legs, I put up the foot up onto the foot and then proceed to work up, find his elbow on the skin, put that into place and then see how it fits in between. You know, do the same thing on the other leg and does it come together in the chest? Does it come together around the legs? So, and then I make notes, you know, I'll keep a marker right next to me and I'll say, okay, you know, this leg here, when I'm looking at the mannequin and, and looking at the skin, um, I went to test fit it here and it didn't quite want to wrap around that calf. So we went ahead and I just wrote shave down, you know, shave. Same thing on this one, shave. So that means when I test fitted it, it's a little big. Now, if I want to get more detailed, I could even go ahead and say, okay, I test fitted these back legs and when I wrap my skin around, my seam was right along the back side of the form here. When I wrap my skin around, if I don't have a line there, that means the skin touched. But as soon as I, I realize that the skin isn't coming together, I'll grab my marker and I'm just following. So if I had my skin laying there, it'd be like this. And that's all the further that that skin will come together. I'm just gonna put a mark and say, okay, that's where my skin comes to. So now I know that up starting from here to here, there is, you know, half an inch, three, mm -hmm. three quarters of an inch gap. Did the same thing on this foot. So it, you know, it's the same thing on both legs. And then even through here, and I'm looking at this, I put a mark here because this seemed a little bit big to me. And sometimes mannequins will get made like that for strength mm -hmm. reasons for shipping. Um, you'll notice it on Fox, especially that their legs might be a little bit bulky. Yes, yeah. Um, and they do that for shipping because otherwise every, it just break, you know? So, so for a per personal preference, I would take this down just a little bit and that's gonna allow that skin to come around and get around that back angle a little bit more. So 
that was kind of that. The belly, um, the belly fit as is right now, and I just know this from just because it wasn't too long ago that we tested it, but there was some very significant body holes in it from fix-its, and because of that, um, because of that and putting those seams together, I'm not putting them together this way, but because of that, it's tightening up that skin just enough that as soon as those repairs happen, I'm betting that it's gonna give me a good half an inch gap in the belly too. So knowing that, okay, you know, now we can kind of say, okay, we're gonna to wanna to take down this circumference here by a good half an inch. And that's kind of with all animals. You get deer that are shot in the neck, um, entrance and exit hole, you know, and the guy has a great big rut neck, you just shrunk it down by two inches probably. Sure. So um, always take into consideration, don't, um, you know, if your mannequin fits perfectly and he's got a giant hole through it, yeah. where the howitzer went. It's, gonna, it's, sure it's probably you know, gonna affect how it that. fits. <laughs> yeah, do, do a test fit, even if, you know, if you, if you haven't fixed it yet, you can test it, but be aware, and then even test it again after you've done your repair and just make sure. So, and usually it depends on the animal. Um, we can cut those uh, wires off. Um, they're real extra long. A lot of people will run the wire all the way down through the base and double them over and camouflage them and things like that. Um, um, ever since on birds and everything, I have left a shorter, much shorter <laughs> piece of wire. Make sure all of your wires or rods are perfectly parallel from the front and from the side. Um, crooked wires won't work in life-size attachment to the bases. It just doesn't work. And uh, make sure they're parallel. We even have, uh, I mean, we put levels on them. We put thumb, plumb bobs on them, like our, our big animals, like our sheep and bears and, yeah, you know, yeah, life-size Big aspect. threaded rod. Yeah. Ooh, that'll make a... And then you... Big man, yeah, one. well, it'll make a big problem <laughs> if you go to put them on and they're crooked. <laughs> uh, but anyway, these... Um, wires they can be probably perfect that's good for me and then we'll straighten those out real nice and straight john says he hates to say this but the reason so many forms don't fit well is because they are sculpted far too over muscle when will they learn animals are not bodybuilders no, no arnold schwarzenegger's running around in the woods. <laughs> we we've made a lot of uh, carcass casts and uh, most of you know what that is, but if you don't, it's a fresh animal skin, and we make molds of them, and that's how we make any of our uh, mannequins because it's so accurate. Um, you can't be very far off, and uh, the legs are very minute compared to what you buy, you know. And I always said too, like you said, uh, I we've ordered enough animals that the legs always come broken, you know, throw it in a box and the legs come broken. And it's not major to fix, but those little legs, um, it can be hard to get a good seam again. Um, Gorilla Glue, I saw John had a post on Gorilla Glue. Um, yeah. Excellent choice of repairing foam. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but you can do that kind of thing, but it's just something you have to do. But um, I think, I like you said, I've always said, I think they're overbuilt purposely, you know. Sure. Keep them from breaking. Mm-hmm. All right, so these pins are kind of all falling out. So we like to use screws to put together our mannequins. This is gonna make our life so much easier. If you use pins or just sit there and try to hold it, um, you would have a very long day of altering. So we wanna make it a little bit easier on ourselves. And we've got some, several different screws. You can use just your regular, just your regular carpenter kind of screws we've got kind of some different lengths here depending on what you're doing and then what we really like to use is these big screws meant for alterations they're 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 great landscape screws that yeah, yeah they're the best for putting big animals together right right yep this they oh man because they'll work out all the way up to bear and big animals. And I think and they come, gosh, they gotta come at least a foot long or more. I think a foot is is the biggest. And then, and you've got them in assortment packs and assorted packs and everything here. Yeah. And they're, but you can, you can use them to 
take them back out. Don't leave them in if you don't have to. Um, no, we because, save them over and over and yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and they come with a driver, you know, a little hex head driver. Um, and you get certain sizes. We couldn't, we couldn't do alterations without those. But it's not on the body. Yeah, yeah on the body. On the body, I'll Maybe. use, I'll use them on the body and things like that. But when we get into doing legs, eh, you know, I don't, I don't need something that big because right. it's gonna poke out the back. So even something, something like this size would be great for just putting these legs on. That's better than a pin. Yeah, the pins were. <laughs> <laughs> Pins are temporary. Yeah. Now we're going to take, this is going to be a series. So we're going to, we kind of showed you the base today and we're going to show you um, some alterations to get him to what uh, we think the customer wants. And then um, uh, next week we'll probably finalize any alterations and maybe show you test fit. Quick note, next week oh. there is no live because oh, it is the 4th of July you. on our Thursday lives. We gotta shoot firecrackers. Yes, yeah, so we will pick up the following week, which let's Good see, Good would be again. well, whatever the date is that Thursday, um, the eleventh maybe. Next week is the fourth of July. Yes, it's crazy. I don't know where June went. <laughs> wow, it's it did so this crazy. Last year too, I think. Yeah, it flew by. Mm -hmm. Summer's almost half over. Next time, anyway, um, we'll just keep going on this cat and. Mm -hmm. um, Till we probably get it done, even finish work, I think then. Might as well. Might we should as well. be able to do it I, in four sessions. Yeah. I think that life size, wouldn't you find that life size tends to be pretty intimidating for a lot of people? Um, and I think a lot of it is just uh, is because of the alterations. Life size takes, um, take, I always found it took experience yeah. because what you do with that back left foot will determine if your ears will even lay in mm -hmm. the I mean, the, the stretching of body almost goes kitty corner. So everything you do on the left on the rear affects the right on the front, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it takes a little practice so you know what, what's going to happen when you do a certain thing. Sure. Stretched out animals distort skin in sure. places. Um, you don't want your face all stretched back like this, you know? <laughs> Okay, so, and then also, um, and this again is personal, personal preference, some people leave these and or use these, these uh, tail rods that are put in, we usually will take them out. And you could just go ahead and snip them off. Um, I personally will usually pull it out because the way that we put in more, put in our tail rods, I don't want to be hitting this but some people will just go ahead and nip it off what do you usually do tom um with the bobcat we have the best bobcat tail on the market so mm -hmm. i would cut it off and put yep. an artificial one in put there an artificial. Really nice. just because we have one our bobcat comes with one mm -hmm. um otherwise i would rather cut it off and i can wrap one much easier when it's off than when it's not yeah yeah so I usually get rid of that, get it out of the way, because otherwise it's sitting. You're fighting it the whole time. Yeah. Um, some people will uh, um, squirt caulk in there. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen caulk tails. You're actually putting, you know, silicone down into the tail sack. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some good tails done that way. Yeah. What's the? Well, I didn't know if you're gonna put a hole in there. Oh, sure. Okay. Do we wanna? Do you wanna go ahead and get the peak set and then alter them from nope. there? Go ahead. Nope. Okay. You do. Go ahead and do our thing. All right, so we know right now our pose is doing something like this. With the pose that we know we want to end up with, we want his, his back a little bit more erected. Just that's the way the customer wanted it, so that's what he's going to get. So in order to do that with this mannequin, we're going to have to straighten out those legs on the front. And right now his legs are real spread. We might leave them that way. It looks like they, they will line up good on those branches, but you could take and put, move them in. You could take and put them straight down. You are, you are the, the creator here. So you, this is where it gets to be a lot of fun and it, you can really make it your own. So I think we're gonna go ahead and, and straighten those legs out and then maybe even bring that leg a little bit back. He's a little bit crouched right mm -hmm. now sure so maybe even bring that back 
So in order to move, move your leg, you just kind of want to think of how do they move, you know? Where do they, where do they bend? Well, they bend at all of their different joints, you know? Here, up his shoulder blade will rotate up through here, his wrist. So you want to kind of think about where the bone structure runs in here. So I know that for sure we're definitely going to be moving the elbows. Do you? I don't know if we'll have to move this. Yeah, we probably will have to move, move these forward as well, which is going to involve rotating that whole shoulder blade. So you could just take and shift it right there, but it probably wouldn't be anatomically correct, really. Um, so we try to do things as correct as we possibly can. So the shoulder blade is actually running all the way up through here. So I'll usually just take a marker and just kind of draw it out. Draw right onto the mannequin where we're planning on cutting so that we can get rid of that foam and rotate it as a whole. So that can make it a little difficult with being these two separate parts because we've got, we've got to rotate this along with that. So when you have your screw put in there, you want to make sure that your screw's either going straight up or don't have a screw mm -hmm. to begin with and just do it separately. Um, I might have to move that screw. So now what you'll find up very up. helpful once you get into life size animals too, if you're skinning them yourself, especially something like a Bobcat customer brings it in, if you have an idea of the pose that you want, skin it, lay it on a piece of this freezer paper in the pose, sideways, profile pose, and sketch it with a, um, one of those, um, what are those card markers called, uh, those crayon markers? Yeah. Um, we call them grease. Pattern, grease pencil. Pattern, yeah, grease pencil. Uh, or a Sharpie or something like that. But mm -hmm. trace the carcass and it will kind of show you um, where the ball joint is here, where his elbow is. If you're yep. going to have him at this angle, it'll show you the angle of the leg coming down. So a, a tracing, once he's skinned and the carcass is gone, you're guessing. So the more things that you can do to keep him from guess, or to make you guess properly, is helpful. Yep. And there's also great um, anatomy books and things mm -hmm. like that. Do we, do we still sell some of the different uh, Atlas, anatomy? Atlas of Animal Anatomy is, Ooh, is, is great. We don't great. do a lot without it. Um, it comes and goes. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm that stopping. is a wonderful book. It talks about, it shows all your rib cages, it shows your muscle structures, it shows everything from Want altering that? to recarving to... Want your weapon? Yes. <laughs> so now I'm just going to go ahead and follow those marks around. Oops, sorry, I'm going to kick you. Right there is a screw. Oh, I bet that's the oh wire. Wire. You can cut through it if you want. Yeah. Wires will. There we go. Okay. So now we've gone ahead and we've removed that whole leg. So this leg can rotate freely. Now some mannequins in some positions, once you cut the leg off, you'll be able to kind of rotate them without it moving away from the mannequin too much and other times as soon as you do this that shoulder that that whole arm is going to kind of jut way out because there, there's pieces of foam on here or on the leg that is making it push away from the body well we wouldn't want to put it back together like that because all of a sudden if this was a real animal his whole arm came out of socket mm -hmm. 
So we want to we want to make sure that that we aren't pulling his joints away from his body. We want to make sure that where that attaches, it's going to stay connected and up next to the body. So as we turn it, I'll come and kind of look down at it and and wonder, okay, is it moving away? If it is, we need to remove foam to get this back in. Mm -hmm. And that's where measurements would help you too, if you had measurements between your ball joints, shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know that this leg, we want this, it, this is the way it is. We probably want them more up in this kind of a position, wouldn't you say, Tom? Sure. That's about what we were thinking. Something a little bit more upright. So he would probably move this maybe a little bit more forward to bring that like so. And then we're gonna straighten this leg mm -hmm. way out. Okay. So as I rotate it around, I see that there's a little bit hitting right here and a little bit hitting in the back. You can either do it on the leg or on the body. And I'm not worried about being real, real exact. You're gonna end up with, whenever you, whenever you alter, you're gonna end up with a little bit of areas that, that are gonna end up having to get filled in. It's just part of it. But when you go to foam all of these legs back on, we'll reattach it with this exact same foam. We'll pour it the exact same way that you did the base and it will come and fill in all those gaps. So I'm not too concerned about, about if it, if I end up with a few spaces and things like that. And rather than holding it, we have a really nice attachment for the bottom father mounting stand mm. that you can actually skewer your animal right on. That's really nice. Especially when you get to the big animals, right? <laughs> then you know you're keeping your eyes and everything yeah. level and right now with these smaller critters sitting here and having to rotate it and then hold it back up and say is that enough is it not yeah you get kind of old so i think we're gonna tentatively just kind of stick this into place here and we can always remove the screw and put another one in as we decide that that's exactly where we want it. Yep. Okay, so now we rotated that just a little bit. It's not rotated a lot from where it was at. It was back a little bit, but we can always do more as we get this one. Now, we're gonna go ahead and change his elbow. And just like here, we kind of said, okay, when we rotate our arm, that whole shoulder blade here moves in one with this whole leg. Well, when he moves this, he's gonna bend at his elbow joint. So we're gonna imagine if he had a bone structure coming through here, his joint would be right about here. And when you're new to altering, it's not a bad idea to look at an anatomy book or a pictures or anything like that Draw the bone structure out, you know, do a quick, a quick little drawing just so you know where your joints lie. Because it's going to be different if you cut it to here than it is to here. Mm -hmm. And if you do it up here, all of a sudden his leg's getting longer, you know, and then all of a sudden things aren't fitting right. So it's good to know where all of your joints are. So to, to move an elbow, we're gonna have to make some cuts to be able to make it bend. So we're gonna make a cut right here, basically that goes right to the elbow, up into the crease of the arm. And we're gonna straighten it out. So we need this to be able to move. So we're gonna have to get rid of foam up here. And that's gonna allow that foam to bend together once we take out this chunk. So I usually will take out the face first. Something 
something like that. Now I'll go ahead and just free that up. Just like a Barbie doll. <laughs> and all of a sudden, once you do that, that foam's out of the way, now you can straighten up his leg. And kind of like people, if we had if we had a base and we needed his arm to come in, you could tip these in, you know, they can do that. Just like we can do that, they can do that. Same thing with their elbows, they can kind of tip them, they can cant their legs. So kind of, it's kind of funny. I don't, I, I usually, whenever I'm altering, I'm over there sitting there moving around and because we kind of move kind of like they do a little bit. I mean. That's what Chris Wallace does. <laughs> He walks like a duck. <laughs> oh, oh. John so. says that if you can save a skeleton or two or more, that those are also great references you to have around. Skeletons are great. You bet. He also says you are dangerous. Oh, I wondered if I was going to get. <laughs> I wondered if yeah, I was going to get that. Looking for a little skewers here. <laughs> like, oh boy, somebody's going to say something. <laughs> So now we've got that leg straightened out. If we needed to, we can bend that. Now just for the fun of it, let's see how much higher that made him if it can. Well, before, both feet touched here. So maybe we need to even loosen that up. I kind of brought him, he kind of moved forward a whole bunch once sure, I sure, brought sure, that sure. leg down, or because we brought that in. Mm -hmm. Which would be okay as long as his head You're still getting fits a nice, inside. Mm -hmm. nice, you're gonna have a nice attitude here. Mm -hmm. So now we would do the exact same thing with this. But since you guys have already seen that and we're, we got time to think about here, maybe we do wanna move on to the, doing the back? Sure, do the back. back. Okay. And it's gonna be using the exact same principles. So I would come up here and rotate all the way up on the leg. You don't want to chop it here and all of a sudden bend because that's not where they bend. You want to make sure that you're doing it up and all the way over. So it'd be something like up in here is what we're gonna cut off and rotate. I got a screw right yeah. there. Yeah. I'm better than a Bob Butter on this guy. Oops, sorry. Just not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That'll be your Oh, way. that's a wire. I usually will pull them out um, just by taking the pliers and twisting it and you can pull this whole wad out because a lot of times if you're gonna be altering the legs this is gonna get in your way and same thing when when uh, putting in tails you'll have that whole knot of wire that's up in the rear end there and it can be problematic when you're doing stuff like that so we were thinking again to kind of get rid of that squattiness and kind of straighten his leg out. You don't, we don't really need to shift it a lot. Even something like that would be great just to kind of bend it back and kind of get him away from that squatted kind of nature. But again, once we did that, 
this moved away from the butt because it's not in the same position it was. So I can feel the foam pushing away from the mannequin as soon as I do that. So we're gonna have to do something, we have to remove some to be able to make it go back in. All right, and a couple of quick notes to show you um, how easy our website is. So you'll just go to matuskataxidermy.com right here. And then when you get to that page, you're gonna click supplies. And then you're gonna see all, we have collections of um, our top sellers at the World Show, everything that's new, um, Tom's favorites, and then our Facebook Live featured products are gonna be right here. And from now until tomorrow at 11.59 p.m., all products that were used in today's live are gonna be on there. Um, the code for that is FBLIVE15, so make sure to take advantage of that. And then also make sure to follow our Instagram page, Matuska underscore taxidermy. We post a lot of cool little things on there. Um, and then another quick note too is that we will not be having live next week because of 4th of July. I can't believe it's already the 4th of July. I know. <laughs> One of my most traumatic, traumatic altering jobs was I had a muskox to do, and I had been a taxidermist again for like 20 minutes, and it was a life-size muskox. <laughs> and uh, I ordered a form, and the price was $900, and, which we didn't have. And, uh, but if I can get this muskox mounted and get money for it, we can make a house payment. And so uh, the muskox form already comes, several pieces to ship it. And so I get this box of pieces, so I started screwing them together. And I had kind of decent measurements that the outfitter had sent. And I knew I had to either add or, to, I think I had to take him down. And um, I started cutting him up into pieces and I had like 15 pieces of foam. That can be a time to panic. I was your... in tears. Mm -hmm. and my wife's gonna want this muskox mounted so we can make a house payment. And <laughs> I don't think I'd get it back together. Yeah. This but we did. gets easier and easier and easier and less terrifying. Start with the do. little things. Start with moving a leg up or down. Just right one or leg. Change it ahead. Make a head look to the side or um, up or down, little mm -hmm. alterations and baby steps and you'll get more confidence and more confidence. Right. All right, so I think it is time to announce our winner from last week. So either Matt Metter or Rusty and Kaylin Olson, if either of you are present right now, um, please let us know you're here. We'll give you a, a couple moments to chime in. And also remember that to share um, this video, you can do that until next Thursday before this live. Um, and also comment that you shared in the comment section just so we, just in case your um, page is set to private so we don't miss you. And next week um, we'll have this in the pose that we want. We'll have it all yep. foamed together and smoothed out. Um, maybe we can show them the head next week because we're going to use a different head than what came with this mannequin. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we'll even get into setting eyes and ears. Yeah. And remember, not next week. No, nah, we get that. <laughs> but the week after. Week. You only have to remind me three times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll call out Matt Metter or Rusty and Kaylin Olson or either if any of you guys are here. Otherwise, we will um, pick a number and see. We'll give you a couple more moments. See who gets it. Um, all right, so looks like we are gonna pick a pick a number, and to the prize will go to one of the live viewers. What is it between one and what? Let's do one in fifty. Ooh, Does that sound good? Ooh, or should we do one in twenty-five? One twenty. I don't know. One twenty-five. There you go. Secret number. Top secret. Okay. All right. All right, guys, start guessing. Mm -hmm. All right. Could you read my writing? 
it's smeared. <laughs> All right, and we'll just wait for somebody to get the right number. It's a lucky one. Yes. <laughs> you have a mess there. Yeah, well, haven't you seen over there? Well, All over right, there. it looks like Bill Jensen is our winner. Way to go, Bill. So you, our prize for this week is our aluminum calipers and um, a Matuska taxidermy nice. pocket measuring tape. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. And yes, you have until the 11th of next week, um, about 3 o'clock Central Time to share um, this video. So we hope everybody has an awesome fourth. We will be closed next Thursday, but we will be open on Friday the 5th. Um, so thanks for chiming in and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks everybody.